Well, I have to say I love my Maslow. Uh, but with, like with all relationships, though, there are some problems. And this is going to be the Z-axis here I'm talking about. In fact, I finally bit the bullet, I guess, and replaced my Z-axis. Um, I had it working really good, but it seems like it was always needing adjustment. You can tell from the picture here that I actually have the, the bungee cord. I tried that. Still, it would hang up. And the case started wearing pretty quickly. So I figured, well, I'm going to just re do this and so here's a preview of what I did and I'll go step by step here too so but basically I had to build the top here um, motor inter interface uh, the router holder and this back base here too and I made some other attachments here too the vacuum system here too I'll talk about here too so so anyway um, this is the slide I used this is, and I like this one because, well, first off, it came already pre-drilled. These are already drilled and tapped uh, one quarter by 20. Um, the back's are already drilled and countersunk to make it easier, too. Uh, there's no protrusion of the threaded rod. And it's actually quick, too. Even though it's like 12 threads per inch, it's a two-start lead screw. So really, it's six turns per inch, which is ac actually faster than the Maslow st stock. And I saw a lot of other lead screws out there but it would be like um really slowing the, the z-axis down and i i refuse to do that so uh, this is the picture i took from this microcarbs uh, ebay website um but yeah this is a fantastic quality i am really impressed with it here's the back side of it too um it does have this top plate which I'll talk about here, because the top plate here, when I first started putting it together, I realized, oh man, here's this top plate. In fact, here it is right here. Um, this is for mounting a stepping motor, of course. And it's not part of the structural part. It's actually just there. And so I was able to take these two screws out here, take the whole thing off, and um, there we go. Um, completely clear. My, my router, I, which I wanted to keep it close because the leverage of the... Uh, the further things are away, the more leverage they have to push then, too. So, um, and uh, this is a 3D printed motor interface, uh, which is on OT and AT uh, Thingiverse. So, uh, pretty simple, very strong. Um, uh, in fact, I can go ahead here and look at this one here, too. This is the front and back view of it as well. Plenty of access so I can get to the, th the screws. In fact, this thing even uses the original uh, shaft coupler that came with the Maslow. So really, the only thing I actually had to put on were these two 1 4th by, um, uh, 1 4th inch by um, two and a half inches long, actually. Uh, the minor steel here, just because I couldn't get the aluminum uptown, or stainless steel, I mean, and I got the, I got stainless steel coming, so, and all the other hardware here is stainless steel. And I had to build this back piece here, too. Now, um, on my Miller-Matic, I have a little hand spooler, which really makes it easy to, to weld aluminum. This stuff is just made out of stock, one and a half inch, 6061 aluminum. Uh, now, I took a lot of pains to try to get this nice and square. And I have a planetary roller I use to bend my little um, stock material here, too, just to kind of give a little more bracing. Um, but, yeah, welding aluminum is nice. I'm not the best welder yet. You can see from my welds, but structurally sound, I'm, I'm, I'm not concerned about that, too. So, um, this is the planetary roller. This is actually a video um, I made of it. It's uh, I got this from... from um, Harbor Freight. It's kind of loose, falling apart, but basically I start with a 12 and one half inch piece of the stock aluminum. This is one inch wide, but I believe this is 3 16th, and you, this is more of a simulation because you can actually just keep on tightening the wheel, tightening the wheel, tightening the wheel, and I turn it back and forth, do it several times. This is the reject piece because it got a little wonky, wonky on the one in there too, so, but I was surprised how well that I actually could use this to um, um, to make these rings. This was not going to be my first design, and I started just playing around with it. Next thing I know, an hour or so later, I was like, well, I got these pieces made. So, And what I did, I welded this to the back. I matched up the holes here to the holes on the slide. Um, and then also, um, I used... I, I just didn't want to weld a single piece of flat stock here. That would not be strong enough to really to put the torque to this. So I had a bunch of this uh, three-quarter inch um, 
solid rods from an earlier project. So I just, this is some cutoffs. I just went ahead and um, cut them off, uh, welded. So I got a nice length to weld, drilled the inside first and put these bolts here. I probably should have done a little bit more cleaning up, but again, I was still uh, proof of concept phase when I was making these things and, I, and they work great and they're just rock solid. In fact, I could probably crush the, the case, I feel like. Um, it, they're very strong. Um, in fact, it is rock solid here too. So um, so anyway, that is um, how I attach the rotter to it. And again, I'm using the, this is the stock uh, rigid rotter. And of course, with the rigid rotter, once I lose that base, well, there goes my vacuum. So I built this and designed this um, vacuum holder that fits underneath the router. This attaches to a standard one and a half inch uh, diameter. Uh, mine's a Stanley uh, vacuum. It seems pretty uniform. There's also a clear window here too. Now how I made that, I just cut a small piece of plexiglass and heat it up with a torch real gently. And then once it gets sort of very flexible, you can just wrap it around the diameter on this other side right here. Hold it there for a couple seconds. Next thing you know, it's, it's set. Uh, and the reason I did that, because I still want to be able to see through here where I'm setting my zero from a Z axis then too. And again, this gives me about one and a half inch of travel time. And again, I could actually extend this, this bit. It's actually a fairly short one here too, but I have some extra long ones here too that really needed then too. And you can tell from this picture that I did raise my rail system up because of the weight distribution of this, um, this rail, uh, through this axis um, slide is a little, it brings a little more weight to the top then too. But, I'm kind of happy with how well it, how solid it is sitting on here. I think this next one's a picture of, yeah, this is it. So you can still get a, a flashlight in there and still see where your Z axis is to home the thing out there too. Um, this thing will fit up to a four inch router. And it's got a little gap there too. So uh, that's, how, well, that's, what the, that's what this diameter is of the plastic then too. Um, so... This is a, a looking at the back here too. This is the frame I made for this too. I could have made this out of plywood, but I, I like well, I like working in aluminum. Simple, light, and very solid. No finishing. <laughs> um, I did take some weight away because of this um, support structure. My, my original sled was 23 pounds. And right now, I think this is 21 pounds, I think. But because most of the weight's hanging here, what I did, I took these little cutoffs from another project and put them out to the side, basically. And I sat there, tried to rock the thing back and forth. And this configuration seemed to work very well for me. Uh, so it's very, it's been very solid moving back and, and trying it in the board then, too. Um, this is detaching the router. Uh, the, ho uh, the sorry, the vacuum hose back to it. It just uses a simple hose clamp to it. Um, I do. I stressed in my earlier videos the need to separate the cords here from the the cords from the power and the cords from the encoders and too. So uh, this is actually I'm not using that bent piece here. But down the bottom here, I went ahead and. These are the isolation rings I talked about earlier, too. And I just hold the pieces together. Uh, the, the further we can separate the noise from the source, uh, the better we're going to be then, too. So, again, Thingiverse, OT, and, and AT. That's where I put all these files for 3D printing there, too. So, this is the finished look at it again, then, too. And I cannot believe how simple this thing slides. It's just a finger slide and um, very, very quick. Really happy how it turned out. Um... Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm all for this one here, too, because I had so many problems before of getting the depth right all the time. As you guys know, the Z-axis is got a little wonky at times, then, too. Um, my hint here is this is my alignment guide, because I had this thing working really good before I um, switched it. I thought, well, I don't want to redo the whole thing, so I, I, I had my plug. <laughs> I found this plug um, that I hadn't thrown away yet, so I attached it just a piece of scrap plywood here, too. Screws in the outside, screwed the whole base here right onto the bottom. Before I took off my router, I plunged a hole right through it, and that's my guide hole. So when then I put my new uh, assembly up here, I just hit that hole, and... Uh, it's been things just lined up. So anyway, hope this helps.